Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Janmad Yasya Yato Nivyad Itaratas Charte Survigyaswara Tene Brahma Hidaya Adikavaye Muyantiat Surayaha Tejo Vari Madam Yatavini Mayo Yatrachi Sargomesha Damna Srena Sadani Rasta Kuhukam Satyam Param Dimahi O my Lord, Sri Krishna, son of Vasudeva. O all pervading personality Godhead, I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth and the primeval cause of all causes of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universes. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji, the original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations of water seen on fire or land seen on water, only because of him do the material universes, temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of nature, appear factual, although they Lord Sri Krishna, who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode, which is forever free from the illusory representations in the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Dharma Projita Kaitra Gotra Paramo Nirmatsaranam Satam Vedyam Vastava Matra Vastu Shivadam Tapa Trayon Bhuna Srimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite Kimba Parir Ishwaraha Sadyo Hridi Avurudyate Tra Kriti Bihi Susu Subhistakshanat Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth, which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity is sufficient in itself for God realization. What is the need of any other scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam, by this culture of knowledge, the Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Nigama kalpataror galitam falam sukumakad amrita dravya samyutam bibata bhagavatam rasam alayam mohor aho raska bhuvibhavukaha O expert and thoughtful men, relish Srimad Bhagavatam. The mature fruit of the desire to Vedic literatures. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sugadeva Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Although this nectarine juice was already relishable for all, including liberated souls. Shinvatam Swakata Krishna. 
Punya Shravana Kirtana Hiryantakstohi Abhadrani Vidunati Shrihitsatam To hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita is itself righteous activity. And for one who hears about Krishna, Lord Krishna acts as a best wishing friend. What? Uh, Lord Krishna who is dwelling in everyone's heart acts as a best wishing friend. And purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. Nasta preesu badresu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Utamasloke Bhakti Bhavati Nastaki. In this way a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam and from the devotees. He becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. Tadarajas tamo bhava kamaloba dayas chaye chete etare navidam stitvam satve prasidati. By development of devotional service, one becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. And thus, material lusts and avarice are diminished. Evam prasana manaso bhagavat bhakti yogataha bhagavat tattva vigyanam mukta sangha sijayate. When these impurities are wiped away, the candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness becomes enlivened by devotional service and understands the science of God perfectly. Thus Bhakti Yoga serves the heart not of material affection and enables one to come at once to the stage of a samsayam samagram. Understanding of the Supreme Absolute Truth, Personality of Godhead. Therefore, only by hearing from Krishna or from his devotee in Krishna consciousness can one understand the science of Krishna. Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1. Chapter 17, verse number 18. Navayam Krishna Bijani Yatakshu Purushar Sabha Purusham Tam Vijani no Purusham tam vijani no mo Vakya beda vimohita Translation by Srila Prabhupada. O greatest among human beings, it is very difficult to ascertain the particular miscreant who has caused our suffering. Because we are bewildered by all the different opinions of theoretical philosophers. Purport by his divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada Kija. There are many theoretical philosophers in the world who put forward their own theories of cause and effect, especially about the cause of suffering and its effect on different living beings. Generally, there are six great philosophers, Kannada, the author of Vaisheshika, philosophy, Gautama, the author of logic, Patanjali, the author of mystic yoga, 
Kapila, the author of Sankhya philosophy, Jaimini, the author of Karma Mimamsa, and Vyasadeva, the author of Vedanta Darshan. Although the bull or the personality of religion and the cow, the personality of the earth, knew perfectly well that the personality of Kali was the direct cause of their suffering, sufferings, still, as devotees of the Lord, they knew well also that without the sanction of the Lord, no one could inflict trouble upon them. According to Padma Purana, our present trouble is due to the fructifying of seedling sins. But even those seedling sins also gradually fade away by execution of pure devotional service. Thus, even if the devotees see the mischief mongers, they do not accuse them for sufferings inflicted. They take it for granted that the mischief monger is made to act by some indirect cause. Therefore, they tolerate the sufferings, thinking them to be God-given in small doses, for otherwise the sufferings should have been greater. Maharaj Pariksit wanted to get a statement of accusation against the direct mischief monger but they declined to give it in those on the above mentioned grounds. Speculative philosophers, however, do not recognize the sanction of the Lord. They try to find out the cause of sufferings in their own way, as will be described in the following verses. According to Srila Jiva Goswami, such speculators are themselves bewildered, and they cannot know that the ultimate cause of all causes is the Supreme Lord, personality of Godhead. Srila Prabhupada Patita Pavane Ki So, there are many theoretical philosophers who put forward their own theories of cause and effect. Well, one thing is for sure. Cause and effect in the material world causes bewilderment. It's very difficult to figure out cause and effect because it's specifically to build or bewilder us because there's actually only one cause and the cause is in the effect. Ishwara Sarvabhutan, uh, well, Krishna says that uh, Sarvakarana Karanam, he is the cause of all causes. So ultimately, he's the final and definitive cause. So therefore, even though there's a evil perpetrator of the, an act of, of violence or, or uh, uh, in, you know, abuse or whatever, still they would not be able to do it unless the Lord permitted it to be done. So this is interesting because uh, we understand that everything originally comes from Krishna. So. Is Krishna evil then if he permits someone to commit evil acts? No. Because it goes deeper than that. Uh, that's why in our uh, Discover Yourself course, there's such a thing as why bad things happen to good people. Right? So we talk about this all the time. Actually, it's a very deep subject because it's related to something called Panchasuna. Panchasuna are the five uh, ways people sin without knowing that they sin. So this is explained by Prabhupada in several places. And I'll read from one of those places. He says, Hence, unwittingly, we are forced to commit many kinds of sins. Notice he uses the word forced. We commit, uh, so therefore there are sins that we are forced to commit and there are sins that we willingly commit. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the, the sins that we're forced to commit. We commit so many sins in business transactions, point one. Common human dealings, point two. Daily chores, point three. Especially political and administrative activities, point four. It is fine to vociferously support nonviolence, 
In other words, he's saying, hey, okay, you, you're, you uh, advocate nonviolence and vociferously means with a loud voice, right? But in actual life, one is compelled to commit acts of violence. Even though people who are nonviolent, they're committing acts of violence. And we're gonna explain this now in detail. One may succeed in avoiding many kinds of sin, but it is impossible to escape committing the five great sins called panchasuna. While walking on the street, we may crush many ants to death against our wishes. While cleaning the house, we may squash many insects to death. While grinding food grains or light, lighting a fire, we destroy many li tiny lives. In this way, while executing our ordinary daily chores, we are forced to commit violence and take many innocent lives. Willingly or unwillingly, we commit sins. So these five types of sins. Number one is uh, when you just do daily chores, like clean the house, right? So you might use Clorox, you might uh, <laughs> uh, you know, rub things. So they're living as these everywhere. There are minute, tiny living entities that are almost imperceptible. And then there are bigger living entities. Uh, you know, like you have fruit flies and all kinds of things flying around the house. And uh, you have ants and so forth. So just by cleaning the house, you kill. Then driving your car, oh my God, you kill hundreds and millions of living entities when you drive a car. You're running over them. The, the big ones you see, you know, some, some uh, fly goes into your windshield when you're going 80 miles an hour on the highway. You know, it's, it's a big blood uh, spot on your windshield, you know. And if, you, if you drive a long distance, there's hundreds of them on your windshield, right? You have to clean them. And then there's flies that go into the radiator, right? Then there's birds, then there's deer, then there's all kinds of living entities that you kill just by driving. Just driving here in the morning, you kill hundreds and thousands of living entities. And then there is uh, being an administrator. Right? So someone uh, threw something that sh they shouldn't have thrown into the toilet, and so they have to clean the toilet. But when you clean the toilet, you can kill a lot of living entities. There's a lot of living entities living in the toilet. And on the floor and in the kitchen, and when you're cooking, you know, the, so many living entities die because of the fire, because of the steam. We can go down a list. It, it's it's ama amazing when you begin to think about it. So doing business also. You're moving things around. You're shipping things. You're uh, sanitizing things. So many ways you're killing in a business. And then in government, you can also kill people. You you decide we have to go to war. And then in war, sometimes bombs don't fall on the enemy soldiers, they fall on, on citizens' homes and, and people or, or little kids die and so forth. So we are committing many, many sins every day. And we don't even realize it. We're killing many, many living entities. This is called Panchasuna. It is impossible to escape committing the five great sins called Panchasuna. While walking on the street, or driving a car, while cleaning the house, while grinding food grains, or lighting a fire, and uh, by being an administrator, being a politician, etc. Okay. It is uh, impossible to be exempted from the adversities caused by mentally concocted beliefs. According to man-made laws, if one person murders another, he is condemned to the gallows. But no action is taken against a man for killing animals. Such is not the law of providence. That's not the law of, of nature, though. The law of God is such that it punishes the killers of both man and animals. Both acts of murder are penalized. Both acts of murder are penalized. The atheists deny the existence of God because in this way they think they can commit sins unhindered. 
But all the revealed authorized scriptures say that by killing innocent creatures, the householders commit many sins willingly or unwillingly by performing their normal daily activities. To get released from these sins, the householders are enjoined to perform certain sacrifices. Foremost of these is to eat and honor the remnants of food offered to Lord Vishnu. As for those selfish householders who cook food only for their own sensual pleasure and not for the service of the Lord of Lord Vishnu, they have to suffer all the sinful reactions incurred while cooking and eating. This is the law of providence, meaning the law of karma. Providence is a big word in English, but it means basically uh, God's will or karma, God's law. Therefore, to get rid of these sins, the followers of the Vedic religion de dedicate their household activities to Lord Vishnu's service. <clears throat> so, that's, now, is there any way to get out of this massive killing that we're doing every day? Yes. If you are acting only to serve Krishna, then Krishna protects you. He says, Sarvadharman Purityaja, Ma Mekam Saranamba, Jaham Twam Sarva Papi That means all kinds of sins, pop. Moksya, I mean. So he liberates you from all kinds of pop, or all kinds of sin. If we surrender unto him. And surrender is a, not a one time thing, it's every second thing. Not, it's not that, oh, I surrendered to. Prabhupada in 1972 and uh, I've been a devotee all this time. No, that doesn't mean anything. You have to surrender every second to only thinking about the Lord and working for the Lord and praising the Lord, etc. So, as soon as we stop doing that, we will commit sins that we're responsible for. Okay, now there's other types of suffering that we have to suffer for, that someone has to suffer for. This is another big topic. So, for example, you know about Jesus Christ. He, he, will, he, he willfully, on the, on the order of, of Krishna, accepted to suffer for the sins of others. So that, there's a big discussion of this in uh, perfect answers, perfect questions. And it's extremely revealing. So Prabhupada says that the Mahabhagava devotee doesn't preach. Why? Because he sees everybody as a devotee. The good guy and the bad guy. So he's not a preacher. One example would be like uh, Rishabhadev. People were doing all kinds of mean things to him. This is when he undertook or he started on the path of uh, uh, Avadut Yoga. He never complained. He never uh, fought back, nothing. He just accepted everything that happened. So he's, he's, when you're Mahabhagavat, but you don't really preach because you see everyone as a as pure devotee, but you see yourself as the worst devotee or the worst person. So Prabhupada says, he sees there is no need of preaching. For him, everyone is a devotee. He sees no more non-devotees, all devotees. He is called Uttama Adhikari. But while I am preaching, how can I say I am the best devotee? Just like Radharani, Krishna's consort. She does not see anyone as a non-devotee. Therefore, we try to approach Radharani if anyone approaches Radharani, she recommends to Krishna, here is the best devotee, he is better than me, and Krishna cannot refuse to accept him. That is the best devotee. But that is not to be imitated. One should never think, I have become the best devotee. Ishwareta adinesu balisesu drisatsu cha prema maitri kripopeksha Ya karoti samad yamaha. A second class devotee has the vision that some are envious of Krishna. But this is not the vision of the best devotee. The best devotee sees nobody's envious of Krishna. Everyone is better than me. 
Just like Chaitanya Charitamrita author Krishnadasa Kaviraj says, I am lower than a worm in a stool. Purishera kitahaite munise lagista. He is not making a show. He is feeling like that. I am the lowest. Everyone is best, but I am the lowest. Everyone is engaged in Krishna's service. I am not engaged. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, Oh, I have not a pinch of devotion to Krishna. I make a show of crying. If I had been a devotee of Krishna, I would have died long ago. But I am living. That is the proof that I do not love Krishna. That is the vision of the best devotee. He is so much absorbed. That is the uh, Prabhupada now. That is the vision of the best devotee. He is so much absorbed in Krishna's love that he says everything is going on, but I am the lowest. Therefore, I cannot see God. That is, that is the thinking of the best devotee. So then, the devotee says, "So devotee must work for everybody's liberation." Prabhupada, yes, a devotee must work under the direction of a bona fide spiritual master, not imitate the best devotee. And then another devotee says, one time you said that sometimes you feel sickness or pain due to the sinful activities of your devotees. Can disease sometimes be due to that? Prabhupada said, you see, Krishna says, aham tvam sarva papi bhyo moksi syami maasucha. I will deliver you from all sinful reaction. Do not fear. So Krishna is so powerful that he can immediately take up the sins of others and immediately make them right. But when a living entity plays the part on behalf of Krishna, he also takes the responsibility for the sinful activities of his devotees. Therefore, to become a guru is not an easy task. You see, he has to take all the poisons and absorb them. So because he is not Krishna, sometimes there is some trouble. Therefore, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has forbidden, don't make many sishyas, many disciples. But for preaching work, we have to accept many disciples for expanding preaching. Even if we suffer, that's a fact. The spiritual master has to take the responsibility for all the sinful activities of his disciples. Therefore, to make many disciples is a risky job unless one is able to assimilate all the sins. I offer my respectable obeisance unto all the Vaishnava devotees of the Lord. They are just like desire trees. They can fulfill the desires of everyone, and they are full of compassion for the fallen conditioned souls. He takes responsibility for all the fallen souls. That idea is also in the Bible. Jesus Christ took all the sinful reactions of the people and sacrificed his life. That is the responsibility of a spiritual master. Because Krishna is Krishna. He is apapavida. He cannot be attacked by sinful reactions. But a living entity is sometimes subjected to their influence because he is so small. Like a big fire and a small fire. If you put some big thing in a small fire, the fire itself may be extinguished. But in a big fire, whatever you put in it is all right. The big fire can consume anything. So a devotee says, Christ's suffering was, that, uh, was of that nature? Srila Prabhupada, he took the sinful reactions of all the people, therefore he suffered. He said that he took all the sinful reactions of the people and sacrificed his life. But Christians have made it a law that Christ should suffer while they do all nonsense. They are such great fools. They have let Jesus Christ make a contract to take all their sinful reactions so that they can go on with all nonsense. That is how they take their religion. Christ was so magnanimous that he took all their sins and suffered, but that hasn't induced them to stop all these sins. They have not yet come to that sense. They have already, they have taken it very easily. Let Lord Jesus Christ suffer and we'll do all nonsense. Is it not like that? And the devotee says, it is so. Srila Prabhupada again. They should be ashamed. Lord Jesus Christ suffered for us, yet we are continuing with our sinful activities. 
He told everyone, Thou shalt not kill. But they are indulging in killing, thinking, Lord Jesus Christ will excuse us and take all the sinful reactions. This is going on. We should be very cautious. For my sinful actions, my spiritual master will suffer. So I'll not commit even a pinch of sinful activities. That is the duty of the disciple. After initiation, all sinful reactions is finished. Now, if he or she again com commits sinful activities, his or her spiritual master has to suffer. A disciple should be sympathetic and consider that for his sinful activities, his spiritual master will suffer. If the spiritual master is attacked by some disease, it is due to the sinful activities of others. Don't make many disciples, but we do it because we are preaching. Never mind, let us suffer. Still, we shall accept these disciples. Now your question was, when I suffer, is it, is it due to my past misdeeds? Was it not? That is my misdeed that I accepted some disciples who are nonsense. That is my misdeed. In other words, Prabhupada is saying he didn't sin. But his misdeed was accepting many disciples. And some of them are nonsense. So the devotee says, that happens on occasions? Prabhupada, yes, this is sure to happen because we are accepting so many men. It is the duty of the disciples to be cautious and think, my spiritual master has saved me. I should not put him into suffering again. When the spiritual master suffers, Krishna saves him. Krishna thinks, oh, he has taken so much responsibility for delivering a fallen person. So Krishna is there. Konteya pratijani nami bhakta pranasyati. Oh, son of Kunti, declared boldly that my devotee never perishes. This is because the spiritual master takes the risk on account of Krishna. So then the devotee says, your suffering is not the same kind of pain? Srila Prabhupada, no, it is not due to karma. The pain is there sometimes so that the disciples may know due to our sinful activities, our spiritual master is suffering. Disciple, you look very well now, Prabhupada. I'm always well in the sense that even if there is suffering, I know Krishna will protect me. But this suffering is not due to my sinful activities. So, very interesting uh, discussion. There's one other point being made. I think I should read that also. So the, the devotee says, I drink boiled water because some of the water has disease in it. But why should I have to drink boiled water if I have been good enough not to get a disease? I should be able to drink any water. And if I have been not acting properly, then I'll get the disease anyway. Prabhupada. Now this is practical uh, advice. He says, as long as you are in the material world, you cannot neglect physical laws. Suppose you go to the jungle and there is a tiger. It is known that it will attack you. So why should you voluntarily go and be attacked? It is not that a devotee should take physical risks while he has a physical body. It is not that now I have become a devotee, I shall challenge everything. That is foolishness. Anasakta shavishan yataraham upayan jitaha nirbanda krishna sambande yukta vairagyam uchyate. A devotee is advised to accept the necessities of life without attachment. He'll take boiled water, but if boiled water is not available, does it mean he will not drink water? If it is not available, he will drink ordinary water. We take Krishna prasadam, but while touring, sometimes we have to take food in a hotel. Because one is a devotee, should he think, I will not take any food from the hotel, I shall starve. If I starve, then I will be weak and will not be able to preach. So that's practical advice by Srila Prabhupada. You see, he was not... A fanatic. On the other hand, that's not an excuse to break the principles. It's only in very special circumstances. So I wanted to talk about this today. And uh, so we see that the bull is not fingering or pointing to
to the culprit. And this is a very deep subject. It's discussed twice in the Srimad Bhagavatam, and later on by the Ananti, Ananta, uh, Ananti uh, Brahmana, Avanti Brahmana. So we will uh, continue hearing about it. Maharaj Pariksit, said, of course, he wanted a statement of accusation against a direct mischief monger. But the bull and the cow declined to give it on, abo on the above mentioned grounds. Speculative philosophers, however, do not recognize the sanction of the Lord. They try to find out the cause of sufferings in their own way. That's the meeting point, their own way. As will be described in the following verses. You know, this, this same discussion takes place in the Bible, in the story of Job, if you've ever read that. Job is, uh, the, the devil comes to God and says, look, he, this guy Job, he's a phony. God said, what do you mean he's a phony? He's my devotee. He said, yeah, but he's only being a goody, goody guy because uh, you're protecting him. You stop protecting him and I'll show you he's not really good. So God said, okay, go ahead. So then God stops protecting Job and then the devil throws different miseries on Job and real, real nasty stuff family dies, he loses all his material possessions, he gets sick, he has pus in his whole body, you know. And then these different people come and they have a discussion, philosophical discussion with him in this terrible suffering situation. They, they, and they say, well, you know, it's because you committed sins. And Job says, I don't, uh, yeah, maybe, I, I'm not convinced. Then someone else says, it's because uh, you uh, offended some person. He said, well, that could be, but still I'm not convinced. So it goes on like that. Different people come and give reasons why he's suffering. That's why it says theoretical philosophers, they all have uh, discussion of cause and effect. In the end, Job becomes very doubtful and it almost looks like he's going to blame God for all this suffering. And uh, he's going to reject God, not blame him, but reject him, right? But in the final uh, moment, he doesn't reject God. He says, look, I, I mean, I'm tempted to say, you know, God did this and it's not good and he's not a good person. But no, I'm not going to say it. I'm going to say that I don't know. It's a mystery. And God has mysterious ways of working. Ah. Then, because he says that, doesn't blame God, doesn't reject God, then God looks at the devil and says, see, he didn't, he didn't become an evil person. He's not evil. And then, uh, and then everything is returned to Job, right? It all comes back to it. So I don't really like that story because it's, uh, in a sense, uh, it's, it's pandering to Job's material desires, right? Uh, but uh, this is much more real discussion. I mean, there's a similarity, but this is much more real, and we'll see how it ends up. Hare Krishna. Well, glory to Srila Prabhupada. Are there any questions? Yes. Uh, just microphone. Microphone. Uh, okay. Take the mic. Okay. Yes. Uh, Prabhupada was saying that the Lord is not like a phony. He's not like a phony. It's a little comment on the on one point. But when Prabhupada says that I mean, a couple of times you mentioned that the body. Yeah, a couple of times you mentioned that the body, the insisting on proper suffering, proper says, you know, suffering. But I'm speaking. Remember? You working now? Okay. Uh, he's, he, he, he didn't suffer because of his uh, uh, karma. But that's a, that's a proper saying, but it's not general answer for everyone. General people, you should say, well, I'm suffering because of my, from the reaction. Ah, it's like, yeah, don't play around with it. Turn yeah. it off. Turn it back on. Uh, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, that, that really, proper said that he, he, he spoke in very intimate situation yeah. to the disciple. Uh, in order to tell the disciple, the disciple should think that good is suffering because of karma. Because good is not supposed to be ordinary, you know, uh, living entity, 
Oh, uh, it could be from Karma. Well, there could be, could be a guru who does sing. That's also possible. Although yeah, but it is, uh, uh, what the point is that the, the guru, proper says that also the guru means pure devotee. Yes. It's an exalted devotee of the Lord. He can never be uh, a sinful. He has no reaction. As soon as you say that, people will say, well, in this time, the guru is still down. Okay, that afterwards, but as long as somebody is still in good standing as guru, the disciple should see that, yeah, yeah. the guru is, is not suffering due to karma because he, he's, not, uh, long, he's no longer under the uh, jurisdiction of the three modes. Yeah. So, but in general, when we're saying, like, we go and tell people, you're suffering too, I can say, yeah, I'm suffering because of my karma, but if, if, uh, if, if I continue, you know, to, to take shelter, you know, they will come out free from suffering. Yes. That should be the general approach, yeah? Absolutely. No, well, no. We've read what the general approach is. It's 12th chapter. 12th and 13th verse. When a devotee suffers, he thinks that this is due to my past misdeeds, but Krishna is protecting me, so I'm not getting what I really deserve. Prabhu, stop playing with these things. Turn, turn it off for the time. So the volume is too high. What's yeah, the volume? No, he turned it up too high, that's why. So, Prabhupada, uh, so uh -huh. the. When, when we, uh, in, in the 12th chapter, 12th and 13th verse, it clearly says, Punjane uh, evam on kritam vipakam. In other words, that the devotee takes suffering as the mercy of the Lord so that he becomes more fixed up in devotional service and, and accepts that it's, it's due to some misdeed that he did but he re recognizes that the Lord is protecting him. He's not getting all the suffering that he's due. And he remains calm and very determined uh, to strictly follow the regulative principles. And he's not, doesn't uh, panic or anything like that. And they're saying that my head would have been cut off, but only. Yeah, I got my finger cut, <laughs> right. Yeah. So that's one thing. But another thing is that the. Uh, the uh, uh, taking the position of guru is a risky thing because uh, if you take many disciples, some of them might not be following the rules and regulations, and the guru makes a pact or he makes a, a, a uh, promise to mm -hmm. the disciple that he'll take him back to her or him back to Godhead. So if the disciple commits sinful activities and does not, go back to Godhead, the guru has to come back as many times as possible to help the disciple come back to, as long as the disciple doesn't reject the guru mm. and, and break the, the connection. They're just weak, right? So the guru would have to come back. But it is possible for, the, for a disciple to reject the connection to the guru. That is possible. Then the guru is not responsible. Mm -hmm. okay. But mm -hmm. the guru is also very merciful. So even though if the disciple comes back, he accepts the guru, the, the disciple again. Mm -hmm. yeah. So there are cases where disciples have rejected the guru and never came back. So they, they break the relationship. Mm -hmm. Not that the guru wants it to be broken, yeah. but they break the relationship. Right. You just like you say, like a pact, you know. Yeah. Everybody to uh, everybody is responsible uh, to uh, to keep that. Guru is responsible, and disciples are responsible. responsible. Yeah, and they're the duties of the disciple and it's the duties mutual, of the yeah, guru. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. All glories to Sila Prabhupada. Thank yeah. you, Hari Krishna.